The Americans with Disabilities Act requires accommodations be made at public buildings for people who are disabled. Even 23 years after the law was passed, it still proves to be a hurdle, though, for many Iowa towns. CBS 2 News reporter Brittany Borgie joins us now. And Brittany, okay, is this the law, first of all, and how can a town not comply? Scott and Tiffany, yes, it is the law, but Iowa's public officials aren't breaking it. Those without accessible buildings do make accommodations if people need them. But in many of Iowa's small communities, the question becomes, are there resources to retrofit an old building to give everyone the equal access they say they deserve? I make this trip an awful lot during the day. Two flights of stairs. They are what separates the city of Tipton from having a fully accessible city hall. Right now, city council meetings are held here on the second floor. But it's cumbersome. Our issue is not necessarily people getting into the building as much as it's people of varying ages wanting to walk up two flights of stairs. They just choose not to come. Active city council attendee and Tipton resident Charlene Thumb knows that firsthand. She has about five friends who would like to attend council meetings but can't make the climb. You know, if I know that many people that don't go, there's probably a whole lot more people that don't go because of the same reason, too. The city does offer accommodations. They'll bring the meeting downstairs if folks can't make it up, but the downstairs space is small. This is actually the room that they held uh, council meetings in at one time. So and Charlene says people don't feel comfortable with the serious, idea. Yeah. And you also yeah. don't want to be the one that they're moving a meeting for. Without the ability to put an elevator into the building, City Administrator Chris Nosfish says the council is scouting for a new spot. Finding a space that's more access accessible is one of our top priorities. But Tipton just built a new fire department, so the city doesn't have the cash for another new building. They're looking at the space available in other current buildings to find something that works for everyone. Cost is always a factor. So it is very expensive when you put elevators in, you put ramps in. Cedar Rapids McKinley Middle School principal Steve Goodall says that's why his three-story school that was built in 1922 didn't get ramps and an elevator until 2011. He says it's the age of a building like McKinley that makes it so difficult to retrofit. And it took 700,000 district-directed tax dollars over two years to update the historical building. And being able to make all of that accessible is a, is a challenge. It wasn't designed for that. But it pays off, especially for students like eighth grader Jojo Braggs. He broke two bones in his foot playing football. I was just happy I got the touchdown. And he's happy about the elevator. He says it helps him a lot, especially when he first got back to school. I felt hot and I, was, I felt weak and I just... I was just happy that it was there for me. I didn't have to go up the stairs. JoJo is one of several kids on crutches at McKinley making use of the elevator right now, not to mention his disabled classmates who use it all the time. So these facilities are either paid for when a town reprioritizes money or when its residents demand a solution. And it doesn't matter if it's going to class in Cedar Rapids or catching the council in Tipton. They should have the ability to go when they want to. The idea is making our public spaces a little more accessible makes our democracy a lot more functional. And the more educated those individuals become, you know, it starts to spread and spread the right information as opposed to maybe the wrong information. The city of Tipton is currently looking into five different places to hold its city council meetings. Nosbish says they'll hold a meeting at each different location and see which one works best for everyone. Reporting live in the studio, Brittany Borgie.